everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you're all doing well out there and today we're going to go back to carry territory for the fourth and final film in the carry saga but before we get into it do me a favor like comment and subscribe join me here i greatly appreciate that also as always a shameless plug for my t public and my zazzle store so i'll leave a link for both of those in the description box below and today we're going to go back to 2013 for the latest remake of carry Yes, this came out October 18th of 2013. It's rated R. It's an hour and 40 minutes long. Had a budget of $30 million. So the most expensive film out of the four to date. And upon release, it made 35 in America and 84 worldwide. This was directed by Kimberly Pierce. And in this film, we have Chloe Grace Moretz as Carrie White. We have Julianne Moore as her mother of Margaret White. We got Judy Greer as Miss Desjardins, the gym teacher who's been in every film, uh, that character's been in every film. And Hawk, Hart Bachner plays Chris's dad in this film. And I only bring Hart, Hart Bachner up is because he's no stranger to Har. He was Doc in the original Terror Train with Jamie Lee Curtis, and he was in Urban Legends Final Cut as the professor who was killing everybody, and he was Ellison Die Hard. He also was a director as well. He directed the stoner college comedy PCU, if you remember that film. I actually like that film a lot. And uh, he's in this film as well. He doesn't. He's only on screen for just a short bit, but it's always cool to see Hart, Hart Bachner show up. I don't know why I'm having a hard time saying his name today. Now, this version of Carrie is very much like all the other versions of Carrie. Once again, Carrie is the loner in school. Her mother's an overbearing religious fanatic. And she slaps Carrie around, locks her in closets, just like the other films. And just like the other films, she gets that time of the month in the shower in the girls' locker room. We see a sporting, her in gym class in the beginning, the girls making fun of her. That, that time of the month happens in the shower. She starts freaking out and the girls start making fun of her. Sue starts to regret it, has her boyfriend ask Carrie out to prom. And then we get pretty much all the story beats from the other films, except for Rage Carrie 2, which is totally different. But the other versions of this story based on Stephen King's novel, it pretty much happens the same. The major difference in this version is right in the beginning of the film, we see Margaret White giving birth to Carrie at home by herself. That was not in the other films. And obviously this being a newer film with a bigger budget, the effects are obviously more prominent. And they used quite a bit of CGI. And honestly, you could tell when the CGI is on screen, unfortunately. But... There's definitely, it's definitely more of a, an effects heavy film for sure. And, you know, the way Chris gets killed is, you know, it, it kind of unfolds the way you would expect it to. If you've, if you're a fan of the franchise, if you've seen the original Carrie, the TV remake, and this one kind of follow the same template. I think it's pretty well handled by Kimberly Pierce. The acting is good. Chloe Grace Moretz is a good actress. I always enjoyed her performances, and she's good here as Carrie White. She's definitely a little different than the other versions, and so she brings something a little unique for her to, or for, to this character, and I appreciate that. Julianne Moore is really good here as her mother. Everybody's good here in the acting department, in all honesty. But, you know, the problem is by time, especially when you're watching them in succession, as I just have watched them all in a matter of a week and a half, two weeks, it's very familiar. Now, the original intention of this film was to be more... I never read the book, but Kimberly Pierce has said in interviews that her intentions was to do a more faithful adaptation of the book. A matter of fact, according to her, the studio made her cut out 40 minutes of footage that she shot, go back and reshoot scenes to keep this more in line with the 76 original. And this does play pretty much beat for beat with the 76 original film um, up to like the revenge plot by Chris with her boyfriend killing the pig and setting up the bucket. All that kind of unfolds the same. So there's no real surprises here. The only thing I would say is Carrie in this one definitely has more of a grasp on her powers. Certainly a lot more. Well, in the re TV remake, she had very little. She didn't even realize what she was doing half the time. Um, I would say she definitely has more even a hold of her powers, even more so than Carrie in the original film. So overall, this is definitely a, just Carrie with updated effects and updated cameras and lighting and all that stuff. Uh, a more modern version of Carrie. It's pretty much all this did become by the time they released this film. 
So there's really, besides some of the performances and like the scene with, you know, Carrie's mom giving birth in the beginning, this is pretty much the same film as 76. Not shot for shot, but you know everything is coming. There's no surprises here. And uh, honestly, by the time you get to this one, if you watch them in succession, it's just like, yeah, it looks good. The acting's good. You know, dumping the pig's blood on Carrie still looks cool. And Carrie taking revenge is still cool. Now, I will say Carrie spares, you know, Miss Dejar Dan's life in this film. And, you know, Sue obviously is pregnant in this version. So there's a little differences here and there. But again, at the end of the day, there's a few minor differences, but pretty much it's the same film. So it's going to depend on when was the last time you watched the original f film, I think. And to, to, it's going to depend on how much you enjoyed this film, depending on that. Watching in succession, it was like, okay, I've just seen this two other times in the last week and a half. Um, this is the first adaptation adaptation of this film. This is the third crack at it, where the girl playing Carrie is actually a teenager. Chloe Grace Mortz was actually 15 at the time when I shot this film. Uh, so she was the youngest uh, girl to actually portray this character. Lindsay Lohan was actually considered for the role of Carrie White, but they obviously went in a different direction. At the end of the day, this is a very competently, it looks nice, it's well acted, and besides a few minor changes this is the same story so again it's going to depend on how when was the last time you saw the original watching them like i did it was like okay this is just the same thing all over again with a few differences and upgraded special effects other than that that's it um but it's not an it's not an offensive film it's fine it's it's well made it's well acted you know some of the cgi i could do without but i'm more of a practice you know I, my propensity for practical effects over cgi and when there's CGI effects, you can tell they're CGI effects. That's my biggest thing. It takes me out of the movie. Um, but at the end of the day, this is a perfectly serviceable addition to the Carrie franchise, which is a franchise I don't think they... Stephen King doesn't like this version. Um, this is definitely way better than the TV remake. I'm going to rank this, these four films. I'm going to do a ranking video to cap this off. But yeah, at the end of the day, I would give this version of Carrie 2013 a 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10 for Carrie 2013. What are your thoughts on this film? Have you ever even seen it? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Share this video. I greatly would appreciate that. I'll be back soon with a ranking video for these four films. But until next time, bye.